up, everybody? It's me, Bryson Booker. It's been a long time. Shouldn't have left you without another video for you to enjoy and devour. And then wait, I don't know, four or five months until I make another one. <laughs> but I'm still alive. I'm still here. And I got another review just for you. Guess what, guys? It's spring break. I'm feeling great. Feeling good. Feeling great until I have to go back to Chicago and deal with more homework. But I'm not going to worry about that now because that's, that'll just mess up my whole vibe, okay? I've been I've been flying on flying on a kite ever since I got here. So I want to keep that momentum going. And this time and this year during spring break, I figured, hey, why not keep my momentum going, you know, of the spring break feeling by getting movies. Now, I'm not really a big fan of 21st century movies. Obviously, most of the movies that I've reviewed on this channel have been either from the 90s or from the 90s, because the 90s were awesome. Let's just say that, okay? <laughs> I think I did review one movie from the 80s. You know, I it's, it's just been a while since I've been on this channel, guys. I've been so busy. But in my busyness, I said, let me stop and watch a couple of good movies. Uh, and let me choose some different movies, because, you know, though I love the 90s, I've been seeing some pretty promising movies in this generation. Some, not all, some, you know, guys, if you dig past, you know, the stupid romance movies or the stupid superhero movies that they keep making continuous sequels of, you can find some pretty well-grounded and well-rooted films, you know, that hide behind all of this other mainstream stuff. And Will You Be My Neighbor is one of those movies. Now, again... This movie came out in 2018, so I was a little skeptical. And then when I saw who it was about, I became even more skeptical because it's like, well, how are they going to butcher him? <laughs> Fred Rogers, how can they screw him up? And so I, I was actually, you know, going into this movie kind of with a bad mental picture in my head. And I shouldn't have did that because this movie uh, really represents Mr. Rogers well. Uh, and it represents his vision, it represents his ideas, it represents his passion so well. And uh, I was surprised uh, when I put this on and actually found it to be a very pleasing documentary. Um, this documentary was released, like I said, in 2018. Universal Studios distributed it, but it was actually made by a couple of independent companies uh, that I cannot really see right now, but I know if you look it up on Google, you can find out those studios who were behind this one-of-a-kind film. But it was distributed by Universal Pictures. I don't know if it was in theaters. I think it had to be in theaters, actually. And I think it was in theaters. But when you're in college and you're in a whole other world, you don't know what goes on in the world around you, so I didn't even know this was released. Uh, but if I would have known, I definitely would have saw it. Um, because it's a very great movie. So the plot is pretty simple, guys. <laughs> it's a documentary about Mr. Rogers. Goodbye. That's it. Okay, it's a documentary about Mr. Rogers and behind-the-scenes footage of what he did besides his TV show. Um, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad, Here, here's one of the things that I like about this movie. Again, there's not really a big, big plot, because it's just a documentary. Um, obviously, if you're a fan of documentaries like myself, you know what to expect. An autobiog an, a visual autobiography of the person the documentary is on. But, I like how this movie emphasizes Fred Rogers as a person who was passionate about what he did. And they use vintage clips, not just from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. You know those documentaries that strictly use content from the movies or the TV shows that the person was in instead of other scenes, okay? Well, this movie does both. It uses clips from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood because, I mean, that was his mainstay on television for like three decades. But it also uses other Mr. Rogers moments that aren't from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. You know, what he did behind the scenes. What he enjoyed doing when he wasn't making the show. I mean, I'm sorry, it must be Mr. Rogers calling me right now. He must be calling me from heaven, I just know it. But anyway, you know, it's, 
basically Mr. Rogers as himself, Fred Rogers, you know, not just Fred Rogers in Mr. Rogers, but Fred Rogers just being himself. And I love how this movie highlights that. I love how this movie uses those scenes from other uh, content that he did to emphasize that he was really passionate and he was really dedicated to understanding children and adults as well. Even though his adult program just kind of seemed very creepy <laughs> and, and trollish, uh, he, he tried, okay? And I just love and I enjoy how this movie emphasizes the fact that Mr. Rogers wasn't just a, uh, just a face on television and was a completely different person. And they even say this in the movie. I just love how they say this. He wasn't just Mr. Rogers on television. He was Mr. Rogers everywhere. And you have past crew members. You have children. You have other individuals that share their input about this great man. Uh, besides them just showing a whole bunch of clips. And maybe two or three of his friends saying how good he was. Okay, this movie goes deeper. And I love how it goes deeper. I also enjoy uh, this fact, and I'm almost done here. Can you believe that? This <laughs> is a six-minute review. Um, I also enjoy the fact that they, when he did do something, uh, quote, controversial, that this movie didn't take it out of proportion. Because, I mean, we're humans, right? Because of Genesis 3, <clears throat> thanks a lot, Bible College, you know, we're, we're imperfect, you know, and, and we fall short of the, of the glory of God. And so Fred Rogers did too. But when they showed that kind of stuff, they didn't continue to emphasize all the bad that he did. They said, okay, yeah, he was a human. He made some mistakes. He had a lot of controversy. And here's what I like. Here's what I like. They show you how Mr. Rogers handled the situation. Not the media, not his friends. Because obviously the media and some of his friends took it out of proportion what he did. They show you Fred Rogers and what Fred Rogers did when everybody was making fun of him. People thought he was gay. You know, all of this different stuff that was coming up about him. And he wasn't even doing anything wrong. You know, that just shows you how... Uh, assumptive our society is just assuming things about people but not really knowing who they are and this was a man who was literally on their tv sets every week showing them who he was but there was still controversy but this movie does not emphasize the controversy it emphasizes that fred rogers was the big man and he stood up for what he believed in uh and this movie is not afraid to show you that and this movie is not afraid to uh, say it in a very, not just a pleasing way, but in a real way, saying people aren't all bad. Even though they do bad things, that doesn't corrupt their whole character. And the life of Fred Rogers pretty much demonstrates that. And it demonstrates how he really cared and how he was really cautionate about what he did. So there's some scenes from the film right there. Like I said, I enjoyed this movie. Now, there were some parts, it's like, you know, this is this is really meant to be a lighthearted movie, but then you had those knuckleheads that always have to say a cuss word or two to give this a PG-13 rating. I just I just really believe that this movie would have been rated PG or G if some of those, I don't know, rock and roll people that they had in this film to, that were on Mr. Rogers' crew would have just prevented saying certain words, okay? I think this movie would have been rated G or PG, but... You know, I guess to keep with the authenticity of who people are, they just let the guys just tell uh, their experience with Mr. Rogers how they remember it. And some of those memories involve very weird nudity. Okay, but, okay. Beyond that, beyond that, beyond the very, <laughs> very weird uh, behind-the-scenes crew moments, the main man himself is highlighted well. Fred Rogers, if he was still alive and he saw this movie, I think he would be, he would he would cry. I, I definitely think that it would bring tears to his eyes because they just didn't take him out of proportion, you know. They didn't try to make him super duper big and super duper tough and buff like some of these people that Marvel keeps coming out with. You know, he's just an average Joe. But because he was an average Joe, 
and he was passionate about being that average Joe, he changed the world without even bringing a lot of attention to himself. He didn't want a lot of attention. He just ended up getting it because he's a legend. Will You Be My Neighbor, distributed by Universal Pictures, great documentary about the man that we all know and love and grew up with. I myself grew up with him too on PBS. Miss him, love him, and you got to check out this documentary if you want. Will You Be My Neighbor, released in 2018.